Hey guys, Jake from GD Honey Acres here. Today, we're going to be dealing with Midaway Quick Strips. Before we get into it, please give me a like and subscribe. That button should be over here for subscribing or just anywhere on the page where you see subscribe. Please give me a like and subscribe, and I really appreciate everybody watching. So, we are going to be treating today, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, a few days ago when I was inside the Joan Hive, which we got to check on her too, see how she's doing. And I'm pretty sure she's released by now. I'm just going to look for eggs, make sure she's laying at least. But I was in the Joan Hive and I literally saw a mite on one of the bees. So between when I did a sugar treatment to a couple days ago, we have mites. I want to make sure my bees are going to have the best chance they can have going into winter time. Now, um... The Hive Jive just put out on their uh, episode, what was that, today or yesterday, about treating in the fall. And John makes an amazing point on why he prefers the formic acid over, let's say, your OA or your uh, Hop Guard or what, your Thymol. Um, mainly because all those, they don't get underneath the cappings of the brood. Your Mite Away will, or your formic acid strips. That'll actually penetrate the brood cappings and get in there and kill the mites in there. Um, he brings up a college, I forget which one he said it was, but he brings up a college that did an experiment with OA treating every day with oxalic acid treatments and it never got rid of all the mites because of the mites that are underneath the cappings where oxalic acid can't get to. Then the bee would hatch and out here comes three to four bee, uh, varroa and they go on the other brood and gets covered and the OA doesn't get to it. So we're gonna do some Mite Away quick strips. And when you're doing that, you're gonna want as much ventilation as possible on your hives. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add an empty super on top. Make sure that the upper entrance is being utilized and remove the lower entrance reducer completely. And then we'll have two strips between my brood boxes because I'm running a double deep. So we'll have two strips there. I will leave them alone for seven days. Now, you gotta have a temperature of a minimum of fifth, like a, a low of 50 to high of 85 degrees. You can't be above 85, can't be below 50 to do this treatments. Now we're in a week right now where we're gonna be in the high 80s, uh, not high 80s, high 70s, low 80s, finally. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do this treatment see what it goes let me read the seven day treatment option here it says lay two strips staggering them so they lay flat and across the full width of the brood chamber with approximately two inches between strips and four inches between the ends of the brood chamber and the outer edges of the strips follow the application options pictogram then it talks about adding the super at the time of application to provide adequate space for strong colonies to expand or if a honey flow is expected, you could have frames in it as well. Because formic acid is a naturally occurring a uh, acid in colonies, so you could actually have supers on when you treat with formic acid. Um, it is acceptable to have queen excluders in place between your super and the brood, and allow a minimum of one month between applications, and do not mix with other miticides. You also have a 21 day treatment where it says lay one strip across the flame frames in the center of the brood chamber, follow the pictogram, add the super with frames or an empty super, depending on if there's gonna be a flow or not. Um, so that way you can have space for the colonies to expand and extract, uh, contract. And on day 14, apply a second single strip as described above. The application of the second strip may be delayed if weather conditions at day 14 do not allow for treatment. The second strip must be applied as soon as weather conditions permit to complete treatment. Then it says, after application, do not disturb the colony during the treatment period, except for when, if you're doing the 21 day treatment, you're adding the second one at day 14. Colonies are expected to expand the cluster as part of controlling vapor concentration during the first three days of treatment. Bearding behavior may be observed. Natural honeybee emergence and mortality rate is approximately 1500 bees per day. A one day equivalent of natural mortality may be observed at the hive entrance during treatment. Treatment may trigger supersedure of fragile queen 
this regardless of age. But John states in the podcast that mainly that's your older queens. These are all first year queens. They're all brand new. Um, hopefully that means they're going to make it for us. Now let me get back to a treatment. My trigger. Check to ensure colonies are queen right one full month after application. Spent tr- strips do not need to be removed at the end of the treatment period. When removed, dispose of by composting when allowed by local regulations. Always follow applicable applicable disposal regulations. All right, before we get going on putting these in, I want to check see how Joan's doing. And then we're going to go ahead and put these strips in. I do have gloves to swap between each time. Uh, grab the strips. It, it is acidic. Don't breathe it in. Don't get it on your skin. Don't get it in your eyes. All right, guys. Uh, I cannot find my respirator, so I'm just going to have to be very careful. I recommend using a respirator or mask. Safety glasses are a good idea as well. Follow instructions. Don't take everything I say here to guys. Uh, 100% that's what you do. You need to do your own research as well. Decide what you want to use and learn the safety measures to do so. I mean, right here it says, don't inhale, don't get on skin or clothing or in your eyes or don't swallow. It's got all these warnings right here. It's a poison. Be very careful, guys. All right, I'm gonna check out Joan real quick. See if we got eggs going. She should, she was mated and they were getting really close to releasing her probably five days ago. So right, I'm gonna check her out. Let's get to treating. Let's do this. All right, let's see other food stores. All right, we've got lots of wet cells. They're still pulling in nectar. That's a good sign for us. It's like uh, here in the Midwest, I don't really think we're actually hitting a dearth. Let's pull this queen cage out. She is still in there. Our queen is still in there, but they've eaten the candy. Come on, girlie, get out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna force release her, hopefully. I don't know why she's still in here. There goes our queen. Okay, so Joan is now in there. I don't know why she was still in her cage, but she's now down in here. All right, so I've got these other gloves on, and here's what the mitoway strips come in. So let's go ahead and open them up. Put on the other gloves that way I could just discard them right away. Make sure you're not going to breathe this in. Do not touch your nose. Do not touch your face. Anything. Wear protective stuff, guys. If you're going to use a knife like I am right here, wash your knife thoroughly. All right, so here's one of the strips. It says place it across, two inches from the edge. And the pictures show this too. I want it kind of more in the center. Just like that. That's how we're going to put them on all of them. All right, now, removing gloves. This is what I used to do as a EMT. Try to get your fingers under the edge there. Pull it off. Use the inside of this other glove to reach on. Pull it off. It folds them into each other. Boom. Good to go. Let's put this other brood box back on and we're going to put a super on it. In our empty super box, we are not exp expecting a honey flow, so I'm not worried about that. Put our inner cover on. Entrance reducer, facing down so that way that it can vent. That's gonna change the Joan. 
And that's basically it. I'm gonna do that to the rest of the hives and uh, we'll talk about the process. Okay guys, as you can see, all colonies have now been treated, including Torvi. Um, I was really excited when I was taking the upper brood chambers off because all of these are real heavy. I mean, they're packing in the food stores, getting ready for winter to hit. Only one I'm worried about is Torvi. She's only got four frames drawn in that medium that we used instead of a deep. Good thing is, since we just did an extraction not so long ago, and we're pro we are currently in the process of freezing all those frames to kill any moth. Uh, wax moth larva and eggs I'll be able to take some of those frames put right into her medium and at the end of that seven days you know which will be Sunday at 3 30 will be the end of our seven day period I'm gonna put frames in fully drawn and we're just gonna feed the crud out of Torby get her full up on food sources you know we're probably gonna do start doing two to one just so they don't have to work so hard on doing that that way we get her built up so we did the two strips per hive including torby um where we kind of laid them like this in each hive like the direction saying the pictogram shows you, they they did not like that smell at all i'll tell you that much uh luckily i was able to stay kind of downwind of it there's a little bit of going so it kept the fumes out of my way I'm glad I carried extra gloves what I actually ended up doing with the foil wrapper wrapper that it comes in is after I got them in there I kind of coiled it up with the hand I had a glove on and just pulled that glove up and over it don't kind of worry about touching it anymore all right guys if you're gonna be treating hopefully this helped you out and um, next year instead of just treating all of them at once we're going to kind of pick and choose. We're going to do an alcohol wash versus a sugar shake because I don't think that sugar shake was quite correct because I did see mites physically, which is not a good thing. If you see mites physically, you got a mite problem more than likely. So next year, our plan is we're going to do the uh, alcohol wash in the spring, midsummer. If we got mites midsummer that are bad, we'll do hop guard. That's another organic treatment um, that you can use with supers, I believe. I'll have to look into that for sure. And then again in the fall, and we'll pick and choose who we treat. That way we can kind of find out if we got good genetics against mites or not. And we'd like to get those genetics to keep going. You know, we will split and keep the colonies in our apiary that are good against mites. All right, guys, hopefully you liked the video. Hopefully you learned something. Um, got suggestions, put them down in the comments. I know there's a lot of treatment-free people, but I want to make give our bees the best chance on their first year of them surviving. We put way too much money and time and sweat equity into this. All right, guys, I'll pray for your family, pray for mine. Um, if you're out west or where all the wildfires are, I hope you are doing all right and hope your families are doing good. All right, guys, God bless, and we'll catch you all later. Bye.